In the last video, I left you with two practice problems to try, and we'll go over the solutions here. But as always, if you enjoy the videos and they've helped you learn, you can support the channel by joining as a member below, and you get access to some perks. Otherwise, you can always like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. I appreciate it no matter how you're supporting me. Uh, thank you all for watching the videos. And of course, I hope that you succeed learning from these. So the first proof, K and Q, L and R gives us R or Q or S and T. Hmm. S and T. How are we getting S and T? Those aren't even in our assumptions. Well, we have a rule for that. So let's see how this pans out. I don't think I need to use long lines for this one, but we'll see. So let's write our assumptions down. We have K and Q. We have L and R. So these are two of our hypotheses. Okay. We need to get R or Q or S and T. Well, this looks like a job for or introduction. So all we need is either R, Q, or S and T, and we could just use or introduction to get our final result. So what I'm going to do is on line three, I'm going to use and elimination to get R. So this happens from line two, and I use and elimination. Since we know L is true, we know R is true. Therefore, we can get R being true. Now, because R is true, I know that R or anything I introduce is going to be true. So I know that R or Q is going to be true. So this is line three, and this is called or introduction. So R is true, therefore R or Q is true, because at least one of those is true. In fact, we know that it's R that's true. Okay, we have R or Q now. Well, I can do the same thing. If R or Q is my well-formed formula, then I can introduce or with anything else, and it'll still be true. So I'm just going to introduce S and T as that extra thing that adds on with the or. So from line four, I use or introduction, and there we go. That's the proof. We have shown that if we have K and Q and L and, L and R, we have R or Q or S and T. So the reason this works is because if we think about the truth values of this well-formed formula, we just have to have one of these things that are true. Either R has to be true, Q has to be true, or S and T has to be true. But we're already given in the assumption that L and R is true, that R is true. So it doesn't matter what Q or S and T are. They can both be false, it doesn't matter. R or Q or S and T is true. So that's how we use or introduction. I didn't really have an example of that in the last video, but this is where you can use it. In fact, in this next question, we will have a case where we have or introduction. That's a little bit more interesting, I think. So I'm going to actually introduce lines for this because I think I might need them. So we have one assumption in this case. Our assumption is that we have Q arrow R. Okay, so this is a hypothesis. Now we want to prove that if we have P or Q, then we get P or R. So there's a conditional here, which means that I'm going to have to have a subproof for CP, for a conditional proof. So I need to assume that I have P or Q, and I need to get P or R out of it. So this is a new hypothesis, and I'm just going to write for CP in brackets so that way we can keep track of things here. Okay, but now I have P or Q. So to get rid of the or here, so I can see what happens if either P is true or Q is true, I have to make two more subproofs. So we'll do this line by line. But, okay, how are we going to do this? Uh, let's start with Q, because Q is going to be a little bit more straightforward. So just for the sake of illustration, I'll do these in green. What happens if Q is true? This is a hypothesis. And I'm going to write in brackets that this is for or elimination, for disjunction elimination. Okay. Well, from line one, we had that we had Q arrow R as an assumption. So I'm going to reiterate that from line one. Now, using modus ponens on line three and four, since I have Q and Q arrow R, I can get R out of it. Okay. So if I assume Q, I get R. But I need to get P or R. That's my goal, to get P or R. 
So in line six, I'm going to use or introduction on line five to get P or R. So I can introduce on the left side or the right side. It really doesn't matter because they're the same. Uh, if commutativity, if order matters, then you'd have to do uh, a new little subproof from there. But I think at that point, it's not quite important. If you want to see a proof of commutativity later, uh, I will do so. I'll just make a new video for it. Just ask in the comments. Okay, so if we have Q, we get P or R. This is good. Now we have to assume, okay, so I'm just going to write a little check mark above here. We don't have to do this, but just to illustrate. Now we have to do P. What happens if we get P? Well, we're trying to get P or R. That's sort of our goal here. So I'm going to introduce another hypothesis once again for OR elimination. Okay, I am assuming P this time. So this is line seven. Well, I'm trying to get P or R, right? That's the goal. So I can just use OR introduction on P because I know P is true based on my hypothesis. And I can get P or R. That's OR introduction. Well, now, whether we have P being true or whether we have Q being true, we know that the end result is going to be P or R. So if I extend this initial line a little bit longer, I can write down P or R in line 9. And this is because of OR elimination. So we had P or Q in line 2. We had a subproof that if we start with Q, we get P or R from lines 3 to 6. Uh, from line 7 to 8, we showed that if just P is true, then we get P or R. So no matter whether Q is true or P is true, we get P or R. Uh, therefore, we can get rid of that OR and we can just write down P or R. Since no matter if just P or just Q is true, we get P or R. Okay, I need to extend some lines a little bit. So at this point, we can do a conditional proof. So remember, we assumed P or Q for the conditional. What happens if we have P or Q? And we've shown now that our final result that we get is P or R. Therefore, in line 10, we can use the conditional proof on that. If we assume that P or Q is true, then we have shown that we get P or R. So from line two to line nine, we did a CP, a conditional proof. And that would be the proof that if we have Q then R, then if P or Q, then P or R. So that's how that works. At this point now, you could use this as an assumption and you could just say, oh, if we have Q arrow R, we can add anything to the Q, to the antecedent, we could add that same thing to the consequent, and then nothing changes. It's valid. Okay, that's it for this video. That's it for these two questions. Uh, in the next video, we'll introduce some more rules and we'll keep going. So with the biconditional, that'll be the end of the simple rules. Then we'll start introducing theorems and using theorems to take shortcuts. So if you have any questions, as always, post them in the comments below and I will answer them when I can.